Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Great. Let me try the screen sharing. Okay, you should be able to without any more permissions. I think you should. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Okay. How about now? Okay, yeah, that's exactly what we want. You can see it. Uh, I was wondering, uh, so I can hear a lot of uh, my own echo. Is this all right? I don't hear any echo on this end, so it sounds normal on this end. So okay. I think you're good. Okay, uh, so um, I was wondering if I can share the presentation only, but not the screen. Not like you mean like not the whole screen, but rather just the window. Uh, just a Google Google Drive presentation. Is it possible? Oh, you mean the the link to the presentation? Oh no you no. Can no. Okay, I'll just uh, try to share this, and we'll see how it works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to do the slideshow. Okay, so is this good? Yes, we can see it. Okay. okay. And I just gave Violetta permission that she should be there. there okay. I was trying to figure out what to do. Hello, Violetta. <laughs> yeah, so we are already sharing the screen. Um, actually, I was wondering, Violetta, um, I cannot share directly the presentation uh, from the Google Drive here, so the option is not available. Would you mind sharing it if you have like multiple screens? I can try, so what I do. Okay, here is the screen, and I can go to this one, and the presentation should be here. Slideshow, so something like this, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I do need to do um a little bit adjustment so the presentation is this thing and it's going to take my whole screen now i do want to have this one available i'm going to move it okay and hopefully that solves my problem we'll see yeah thank you i mean at some point i'll have to bring it back to that screen but i would like to have it available yeah, I think that would be good. And then another thing that I have to do is figure out. I have a lot of browsers open. I have to be able to switch them quickly. All right, should be fine. Yeah. So it's uh, 5 p.m. now. Should we start, Savas? Or would you like us to hang for a couple of more moments? Um, if you're okay, I could not hear anything. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you, but I couldn't hear Savas. Yeah, the connection is kind of like breaking. Do we know how many people are in the session? I think 15 watching. Yes, 15. More. Okay. And how do we text to people in the session? That's a good question. Oh, if I just go to chat and type. 
I don't see chat on my side. Or it's chat in the event. Yes. But even in the event. In the session. Okay, so in the session. I don't see chat. So uh, on the right hand side, next to event tab, there is a session tab and I click chat and I see, hi Antonio. So if I click on the session chat, you're currently broadcasting, leaving this page will end your stream. That's what I get. I can take uh, over the chat if you want. Okay, I mean, for some of the URLs, it might be easier to just copy and paste them, but I can't figure out how I do it. All right, I mean, we should be okay. Oh, I, there is chat. Okay, there is the general chat. So, okay. Yeah. I think this oh. is the general yes. chat. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Well. Well, uh, hello everyone. Now there are 20 people watching, so it was a good uh, thing that we uh, hold for a moment for uh, letting more people in. So um, welcome to the Swarm Hacks and uh, welcome to our session where we're going to talk about how to create your own NFT and many more fun things around that topic. And uh, today, uh, uh, Violetta is joining me today, uh, who is the community builder uh, and educator at the Blockchain Developers United. And my name is Maria Patrick. I am a graduate student at the University of Florida, and I'm also the VP at the Gator Blockchain Club. So if you want to learn more, please join our communities and uh, we will, uh, you will definitely find some even more resources about this. So in today's presentation, we are going to talk about what are NFTs, and we will have uh, we will have some uh, hands-on um, purchase and interaction with NFTs, as well as Violetta will show us the how to develop your and deploy your own NFT contract, and um, we will proceed talking about how NFTs create value and maybe it will give us more insight why the prices for some NFTs are so crazy high. And um, let's get started. So Violeta, would you tell, talk us a little bit more about what are non-fungible tokens? Um, Maria, thank you for the nice presentation and introduction. And I'm happy to be here. The non-fungible tokens are something very hot these days. And uh, the way I would like to explain it is through an example. What you see here are the first generation DevPunks and non-fungible tokens that the participants in the NFT course built only a couple of months ago. So we worked together to learn about um, non-fungible tokens and then uh, for the team project, we sat together and we created many unique um, images of dev punks. And if you wonder what are these numbers, uh, these are the HTTP requests on the shirts. Right, right now, the first generations generation of uh, dev punks were only twelve but we were going to um, build uh, to mint even more and you can have one too when you join the community. But what's interesting about these non-fungible tokens is that they're unique. They present um, ownership of uh, what we have and they're a digital asset. I'm going to turn this to the audience and see what do the audience think? What are the non-fungible tokens? you can um, give us your um, thoughts and votes by using uh, by going to slido.com and punching this code and then you'll be presented with the option to vote we'll give a couple of minutes for the audience to uh, vote and we are going to watch it real time
All right, I see votes. We have four people voting so far. We'll give it another minute. All right, we have eight um, people voting and it looks like we have very good agreement that the non-fungible tokens are one of a kind digital assets. That's correct. Serve as a proof of ownership, ownership for the digital assets. So the proof of ownership is uh, something that um, did not exist before and with uh, the NFTs, we have that opportunity to claim that a digital asset belongs to somebody. Digital assets um, represent real world objects. They do represent real world objects, although not always objects. Sometimes it could be services, something like a club membership. And they are very valuable digital asset. Well, and that's true for some of them. If you ask me about the Dev Punks and how much effort we put in building them, I have to tell you, I wouldn't be willing to sell that one for anything. So now after we have some idea what the digital assets are, let's talk about our um, quest today. Yeah, thank you very much, Violeta. And thank you very much, everyone, for participation. So we are going to keep part, keep that connection with the audience. And we, for this purpose of this workshop, we develop a special game where on the first stage, you will be able to accept the participation in this quest and uh, get uh, an NFT certificate for participation in this particular quest that we're doing today. In the, in, in the duration of this workshop, uh, Violeta and myself, we will show you different steps, different activities that you can also follow up with us. And in the end of this, you will be able to exchange your first level certificate to the second level certificate. Only those people who would uh, get the first level certificate will be able to mint their own level two certificate and we will show you how to do that and in the end of this game for those who get their level two certificates they will be rewarded with the treasury from the purchase from level first certificates it might sound a little bit complicated at the moment but but we will walk you through the whole process and we will let you know how to reach that reward. So for the beginning, I would encourage you to enter the participation in this quest. So let me walk you through how we do that. First of all, you need to access our collection with the level first certificate. I'm going to share the link in the chat right now. You can click this link and it will lead you to the OpenSea testnet uh, where you can purchase your first level certificate. To purchase the certificate, you might need to install your MetaMask. So if you don't have a MetaMask installed yet, I highly encourage you to proceed and install the Chrome extension for the MetaMask wallet. It will be as simple as creating your account in any other digital app and uh, the installation process will walk you through all the stages necessary for that once you will be once you uh, install your metamask chrome extension i will be sharing the link to that too but once you will try to purchase the um, nft from the link that i sent you on a testnet uh, it will prompt you directly to MetaMask installation. So for purchasing this NFT, you will also need to have some funds on your in your MetaMask wallet. If you don't have any funds, that's not a problem. Since we are working on a test net, 
we will be able to request some funds for our play to play quest. So right now in this uh, in the chat, I will be sharing the link to one of the faucets on a Rinkeby network where you will be able to request your funds. And importantly, that once you install your MetaMask wallet, you want to switch to the Rinkeby network. Uh, Violetta, would you be able to show us how to switch to Rinkeby network? So the best is to set up your MetaMask. So here is my MetaMask. And on MetaMask, you can choose here from account. Um, I have a few accounts. For example, the, the treasury account is this one for this presentation. And this is the account, um, the user account that I will be using for the demo. So the first you need to choose the account that you will be using. And after that, from this menu, you can pick up Rinkeby Test Network. If you don't see the test network, most probably you will have to enable it uh, from the settings of MetaMask. I believe we go to here where the settings are. And under settings, um, under general, you should be able to find. Um, I think it's advanced. It's under advanced. I think so. All right, and let's see, somewhere we have, okay, show test network. So it is under advanced, show test networks, and you can turn them on. After you turn them on, you will be able to see a few test networks in this menu, and we will be working on Rinkeby for this. So once you're done with um, selecting the Rinkeby test network, you can go to testnets, op opency.io. You can go to the link that we shared in the um, chat for um, play and learn, uh, play, learn, earn collection. And from that collection, so this is where you will be sent. And from that collection right now, we have only one item, which is our level one certificate. So the level one certificate is for sale and you can click on buy now. You have to um, agree that you understand. Uh, and then I agree to open C terms and services. So another checkbox and confirm checkout. So at this point, because we are purchasing it, MetaMask will pop up giving us information about how much gas we will giving us estimate about how much gas we will pay um, as well as um, the nft cost plus the gas so the nft cost is 0 0.01 as you could see and uh, the gas is added to it i can confirm this transaction and then we need to wait for a few seconds for the transaction to be approved by the mm, notes and i did receive right now notification that this is completed so right now i purchased one of the nfts with the user account that i have here to find out that i indeed have it i can go under my profile and i and you can see that this is the new certificate that i purchased everything else that you see were the tests we done to prepare for this uh, workshop. And I think that also we need to mention that since we are working on a testnet, make sure that you select the Rinkeby testnet and the last link that I shared with you to one of the faucets, you can um, go and get, I think it's 0.1 ETH. So Melanie is asking, can you show how to get free ETH from Rinkeby testnet? Um, uh, okay, so um, we gave you a link to a faucet. So I'm just going to copy the link from the chat. So this is a faucet. And what we do is we go to this faucet. Um, since it's made um, for the link network, the link token, 
it's not, a, not the network, but a token. Uh, for the link token to work and to be able to test, you will need um, also ring by um, tokens. So that's why they are sold together. And what you do is you go to your MetaMask that you just installed, switch to the account and the network that you need and copy from here the address. So I just click on this square and the address is copied and then I paste it. And right now I can check I'm not a robot and it will ask me to solve the puzzle motorcycle. So this is a motorcycle and this one, I hope I got them all. And if I got it right, it will initiate a transaction. And right now we are uh, waiting for the transaction to go through. I think we have to wait a couple of seconds and I would get 0.1 ETH and 10 link in my account. All right, looks like the transaction went through and I can go back to my account and check if um, did it increase with 0.1. I did not pay attention how much was in this account. And you can also uh, paste uh, like your vote and just let us know in chat if you managed to purchase an NFT level one certificate. Actually, this is what I would like to right now review. So if we go back to the collection, we can see that there are four owners of, um, of a level one certificate. So we, we have four, um, for people who purchased it. I mean, one is the treasury who is holding and a few others. Maybe we can give another um, minute or two. It will be interesting to have more people who purchase the certificate. Yeah, I um, think that we can do that. And you guys let us know in chat that you got one. Okay, amazing. All right, so once we have the certificates, the level one certificates, we are ready to move on the next step where we would like to show you how you can create, how you, you can be a real developer of NFT certificates. Since uh, the time limitation, we are not going to do this hands-on. We are just going to demo the whole process. However, you should be able to uh, repeat the process and um, ask us questions if you join the Discord uh, servers that we share. We are sharing with you. I see that in the chat uh, there is a delay. So if there is a delay, and if you would like us to slow down, perhaps put a note in the chat and we can go back as long as the time permits us to do so. All right, so how you create your own certificate? I'll, I'll explain it in three steps. Three steps always work. So step one is we need to create a contract for NFT. There is standard called ERC721, and we are going to use uh, an example, an NFT example, from uh, this standard. So this is um, this NFT, which is using NFT 721, and we are going to use its contract to create our own. So inspired by the Valentine's coming uh, in uh, two weeks, this is a new collection that we just posted with a very simple um, ERC 721 NFT contract. This is the connection. You see this orange bar here? The, connect, the collection is posted on, um, on uh, Polygon, which is uh, one of the main nets. And that's why you see this uh, node here. Our wallet is connected to Rinkabai, which is a test net. But we really want to be on, on the main net. That's why I'm not going to switch. The next step is to find out what is the contract behind this collection. 
The easiest way to do it is click on one of the items. I just picked up the first one. And here under details, you can see that there is a link to the contract. So if I click on this link, I will be sent to the block explorer for the Polygon, uh, for the Polygon network, which is Polygon Scan. And in particular, in this screen, I see that all the transactions for uh, the contract that was used to create the Fractal Love collection. We can get more information about the contract under the contract tab. And as you can see here, we have full code for the contract. This is the code that we are going to use. Before I come and copy it, we will use development environment, which will be uh, Remix Ethereum uh, development environment. So this is online development environment. And it comes, um, as soon as you start it, it comes with uh, the default folders. The contracts will be created under the contracts folder and you may have um, other contracts here. It doesn't matter, you can leave them. We are going to create a new one, like a new file, and we will call it swamhacks.sol. The contract is written in Solidity, that's why it's sol. And here in this file, I'm going to copy the contract code from um, from this NFT. Before you copy, you need to check the license for the contract code. So since this was um, a, co a contract that um, we deployed, I knew that it's MIT and we have permissions to use it. And here I'm pasting the contract. It looks like a long contract because it's a flattened one. Um, all pieces of code, uh, code that are included from libraries are, um, in, are right now flattened in one big file. However, in practice, when you develop contracts, you will work only with um, your part of the contract. And in this case, the part of the contract that we are working with is just the very last contract function, contract object. Uh, we are going to change um, this to match our event. So we will call it Swamp Hacks. Um, I would like to use a different word uh, so that we can distinguish the contract. So let's call it Swamp Hacks. All right, fun. Let's do it that. And then we will. So what you see here is the contract name. And then there is a short symbol. We usually use the first letters, although you can use anything. Do that just to be short. And for now, that's all that we are going to change in this contract. So once we have the contracts uh, uh, ready, the contract uh, source code ready, we click on uh, Solidity Compiler and we comp compile this contract. So the green checkbox here means that we are done with compiling and there are no errors. You can also watch the console down here for any uh, errors. All right, the contract is compiled. The next step is to deploy the contract. So to deploy the contract to a network, we are going to use again Rinkabyte, the test net. First, make sure that you are connected to the account that you want to use for deployment. So in our case, it's Rinkabyte test net for account one. And then from uh, this menu, we will pick pick up Injected Web3. So Injected Web3 refers to MetaMask. Uh, it's going to interact with the network through the MetaMask um, interface. And that's why it's Injected Web3, like MetaMask acts as an Injected Web3. Uh, you can see the account that will be used to deploy the contract right here. And uh, another thing that you need to pay attention to is picking up the right contract. So 
we are going to deploy oh i made a mistake with the name maybe i'll go back and change it swamp hacks fun this is correct all right so i'll need to compile it one more time oh, i made a mistake in the file name too probably let's see if i can yeah, so right now it's correct and once it's uh, once we pick up the right contract and the right environment, we can click on deploy, and it will ask me to approve the transaction. So deployment costs money because um, each contract will take storage, and compute power and memory, and that's why we will need to pay gas for that. Um, plus whatever uh, amount the contract is using. I'm confirming this transaction. And now we have to wait a couple of seconds to see uh, that the contract is deployed successfully. So we got the green check mark here. I still have to re receive notifications for uh, the completed transactions to be certain. But uh, once the contract is deployed, we can see here, all right, I received a notification. It comes from um, MetaMask on my other screen. So once the contract is deployed, you can see here under deployed contracts, the, the contract, and you can copy its address. So I would say the first step with having uh, the NFT um, deployed is done. And just to see this contract we can uh, go to oh actually it's not 100 percent done because for us to uh, interact with the contract it's good to have it verified so this is the contract address but uh, since we're deploying on rinkeby we will go to rinkeby uh, explorer so rinkeby etherscan.io so i'll go there and paste the contract address and this should send us directly at the contract address. As you could see here, we have this contract tab, but there is no source code. So we will go through the process of verifying this contract. Um, it's going to be verified as Solidity single file. And the compiler version we will take from Remix because we use the default one and we did not change it. So let's check which one it is. So it's 0 0.87. We are going to pick up that compiler version. And the license type is going to be MIT and continue. Now on this screen, we need to uh, paste the source code. We are, we are going to get it from Remix. I'll just copy it. And I'm checking again that I'm not a robot and do verify and publish. So this will take a couple of seconds. Sometimes it takes a bit longer. But if everything goes well, our contract will be verified and we can interact with the contract from the block explorer. All right, green means we are all done. So we can go to our contract right here and you can see this green checkbox because it's verified and then in addition to the source code we also see the tab for uh, to read contract so all these functions come from our contract and these are functions that we can uh, read for those we don't have to pay gas and all the functions on the write contract are the functions that we can use to write so for example creating an nft so that will be the mint function uh, we can write to um to that contract with that mint function i would say this is where um the first part of uh, creating nft is done this is the part where um, we now have the contract deployed and we are ready to go to the second part of uh, creating the metadata for the nft so metadata is what describes each NFT. 
I'm going to use already defined um, metadata that we have posted as samples for um, experiments like this. I think I misspelled my uh, repo. So right here in this uh, repo, we have some sample metadata. I'll use the sample stone metadata. And since I we tested with the black stone, I will take, let's say, the gray stone. So the metadata for each NFT is given in JSON file. And it looks like this. So we have the name, we have the description, and the image is the actual image that is behind the NFT and you can uh, check and see that this is a gray stone image. All right, so this is our JSON file that we would like to use for metadata. So the, sec the second step is to create your metadata file, including the actual images that um, will be part of the NFT. For us to use this JSON file, we need to use it as a raw file not the HTML uh, representation in GitHub. So I'm going to use the JSON file as a raw file with HTTPS and going back to this contract, I will, so my token URI is the metadata for the NFT that we will mint. The player in this contract is the person who will receive the NFT and I'm going to add it to the same account that I'm using right now. Although it, it does not have to be, you can give it to any account. And for me to be able to perform this transaction, I will have to connect to MetaMask from this button. All right, here you go, we are connected and I'm going to write. For the contract, it uh, tells me how much it might cost me and I'll confirm. And again, waiting for a couple of minutes to uh, have the, con the transaction completed. So once this transaction is completed, we have the first NFT minted and I would say that's the second part uh, of creating your NFT. So the third one is how do you know what you created? So we are going back to OpenSea, that's the marketplace that we are using in this um, demo for um, for the NFTs that we create. Uh, we created NFT called Swamp Hacks. Um, it was some hack hacks fun, right? Because I have, well, that must be it. So here is our NFT. The first one, the image did not come through, but sometimes it takes a couple of minutes to see it. And that's the first uh, element in the connection, in the collection. Sometimes it takes a couple of minutes before the image displays, so it might be just the case. So we do have one item. If the image doesn't display, then uh, we will have to see what could be wrong with the image but I would wait a couple of minutes before we think that something is wrong. And now you know how to create your own NFTs. Yay, thank you very much, Violeta, for showing us. So let us know in chat, how are you doing on that part? If anyone followed along Violeta and in a couple of moments after we see the created NFT, we will continue with minting our own NFT, minting the level two certificate. I think we can just move on to the next step. Yeah. Uh, and maybe before the end of the demo, the, we can come back here and see if this showed up or not. Sometimes there are some issues with um, images, usually in creating the JSON files. Mm -hmm. So we will, I mean, it may need to be troubleshooted, but everything so far that we troubleshooted ended up working. Okay. 
And you can see under details here that it refers to the same contract that we were um, using to mint this NFT, which was this one. So, right, it's 59C5. I'm usually comparing the last. Well, no, it's not the same contract. Oh, actually, this is the other one. So, it is. Yeah, that one is. It is this one. one. 59C5, right? So it's this one. All right, I would say let's, because it's um, 5.36, we have like 10 minutes. Yeah. Let's try to see um, if uh, we can have more people being able to mint level one and level two certificates. Great. For uh, level two certificates to be minted, uh, people need to have level one certificate and we need to open up minting for the level two certificate. So I'm going to work right now on opening up the level two certificates. And uh, would you like me to share the screen and? Yes, you can do that. How would you, I don't know if, oh, do I stop sharing? All right, you know what to do. Yes, so. I will go to the chat and earlier I already sent a link to our level one NFT. I will just go there and I just want to access the collection. So this is our certificate. So once you purchase level one NFT, uh, as we showed before, just by clicking on buy now, and linking to your MetaMask account, you will have it in your account on OpenSea. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to find the under details of the level one certificate. I'm going to find the contract address. And having this NFT will allow you to mint the next NFT in this sequence. So it's important that you purchase the first level NFT to get to mint the second one. So I'm going to the contract to click the contract address and it will redirect me to the ether scan on the Rinkeby network. So what I want here, I want to go to the contract tab with a green check mark and I want to go to the right contract. All right. So I want to find the function which will allow me to mint my certificate, mint my cert. And I can see that I need to input some data here and I will be able to write or mint my own. But before I'm able to do this, I need to connect basically to my MetaMask wallet. So connect to Web3, I click on that. I will connect my MetaMask wallet. And now it's automatically connected. The green uh, dot tells us about that. So I want to mint it to my MetaMask account. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the MetaMask, copy my account number and put it in here. So in the field ID, I will put the one. So the level one certificate was indexed as zero and the level two is indexed as one. So, and I click right. Waiting a couple of seconds and to mint my second level certificate again, I need to pay the gas fee. It's very minimum amounts and I'm also using the funds from faucet. Now my NFT is minted. So let me go back to OpenSea to my profile. And it usually takes a couple of more moments to see your newly minted level two certificate in your account. So we're not going to stick and wait. You can check it like in a minute or so, and we are going to continue with our final part where actually, if you receive, if you are able to mint the level two certificate, we will be automatically seeing your MetaMask account. And after this workshop, when everyone mints, we will be able to send back the funds uh, 
from the treasury to your MetaMask account. So you may also check up on that later. And uh, finally, as we talked at the beginning, we would like to also discuss how NFTs create value. So Violeta, would you be able to sh share your screen for that, for the survey? All right, I, uh, I was checking uh, with the contract. So here is the image can be displayed now. And going back to our presentation, how do NFTs create value? So everyone who hears what NFT is starts asking, well, what really is this thing? I mean, I can go to the website and just download the image. Why do I have to go through all this uh, deployment of NFTs to, uh, to just get the image? I mean, I can get it anyway. So this is the most interesting question about NFTs. So we would like you to think about it and give us your opinion. I'm going to uh, run another poll in Slido. And I hope everybody can give us opinion about how NFTs create value. Why some NFTs cost so much money, like hundreds of thousands of dollars or maybe million. So to um, participate in this poll, you need to go to slido.com and type the code or just use your previous screen where you're already logged in. All right, I see a rare piece of art. So this is This is where one can prove the ownership of piece of art and that's why it's expensive. Exclusivity and community. Indeed, some community use NFTs. Many communities use NFTs today uh, for club events, for any meetings, or even other perks that the club provides. Certificates was example that we use today. <laughs> and they don't have uh, value. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I'm thinking back about the Def Punk we generated. I have to tell you, it does have value to me. University diploma. So the universities are more and more looking into digital certificates. And the good thing about the university diplomas is that um, once you have it uh, as, um, once you have it on a medium like the blockchain that is trusted, uh, one can verify that diploma very easily across countries. Complete ownership, indeed. I think that's probably uh, the biggest reason, the ownership is the biggest reason for the NFTs to become so popular. Any other ideas? I'll continue with our next slide. So here's one project that we did. Um, uh, Blockchains Developer United. So this is, um, it's called Word of Mouse. It's a collection uh, on uh, OpenSea. You can see it, I have the URL here. And the collection is a therapy through art. So as losing the use of my hand motivated me to use art to regain it. So this, this collection aims to inspire resilience and it has very interesting crews. Donate a selfie with a word that best describes you. Use the artist within yourself and cover part of the image. Then leave the rest to the imagination of the viewer. Only 21 NFTs can be created. And the um, collection uh, owner is uh, still searching for uh, donations to add to the collection and you can uh, find her on Twitter or also in our community. Another NFT, well, I was looking for examples for NFTs and when uh, we were looking at it on LinkedIn, we just got this um, a post. So Amazon are on their way to offer NFTs and the value that they offer everybody who gets this first batch of NFTs, one of these first batch of NFTs will have 10% cashback on their Amazon shopping forever. 
And it made me think about the value of NFT a lot. So they have some other perks too. I haven't checked to see what were the dates for this NFT. So I don't know if it's still offer or it's already done. And we are at our last slide asking you to think about your own NFT idea and how you are going to bring value. I'll pass this now to Maria. Thank you very much, Violeta. And this is a, indeed a very powerful question. What is your NFT idea in the context of those unique features about NFTs, what they offer and how they build up their value? So if you want to learn more, you can join Gator Blockchain Club community on Discord and Blockchain Developers United community on Discord and get uh, the access to a whole lot more resources like we show today and even beyond that. And uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Violeta, for your wonderful demo presentation. And I hope that uh, everyone had to learn something new today. And special thanks to the organizers and the opportunity to share what we know. Thank you. I think it's 5.47. I don't think we have time for questions. Yeah, definitely. If you want to learn more, uh, or you want to have access to any of the resources that I was uh, sharing all the links to, as we went through the presentation, I was sharing all the links to all the resources that we used. And you can definitely find more information in both of our communities. So it's Blockchain Developers United and the UF Gator Blockchain Club. Feel free to join and you can definitely find uh, the link to a lot more answers for your questions that you might have. Okay, so thank you very much Swamp Hacks for hosting us today. Bye everyone. Bye everyone. See you in the community. See you.